Hi, my name is David Keegan. I'm an academic family doctor here at the University of Calgary. Right now we're going to talk about how to write a prescription. So writing a prescription will happen in two different ways. One is on paper and one is through an electronic record. The rules are actually the same for both. So first, you make sure though you've got the correct pad or, uh, pad or the correct electronic record because there are certain drugs, uh, stimulants and narcotics that in many jurisdictions require a particular pad, like maybe a triplicate pad or something else. So once you've got that down, then the rest of the rules are pretty much all the same. So first, you make sure you've got the patient's name properly written so that the pharmacist or uh, whoever is uh, filling the prescription will be able to read it. So, uh, Gene Smith. And then there's often a line for the address, and that's actually probably good to write as well. It just helps decrease confusion, decreases the chances that the, the prescription when it's filled by a pharmacy will end up in the wrong patient's file and so on. So 62 ABC Lane. Great. And you can write a date of birth as well, but usually the name and address would be fine, and then you're good to go for the actual name of the patient. Great. Next, you're actually going to write a medication. So you should always be using a generic drug name. And the reason for that is to decrease the risk of confusion. There are maybe a few rare times when there's combo drugs, which are two or three medications together in the same medication that you might want to use the brand name because it actually might be clearer uh, to, the, to the pharmacist, clearer to the patient, and so on. And there's maybe a few rare times when you want to use the, the, the brand name because you don't want to substitute it. Uh, you want to make sure it's not generic because we know that there's a little bit of variance allowed for generic dosages in each pill, uh, but you don't want to vary too much for a couple different, for a couple of medications. But for the most part, you should be using the generic name. So you want to print primarily, print or have ridiculously clear uh, writing. Because the purpose of this is a communication to a pharmacist on how to mix or dispense a certain type of therapy for a patient. You don't want any errors to happen. And so frankly, printing is the best. And if you have more than one medication, numbering them is very handy as well. So metoprolol, nice and clear. Make sure you have the drug dosage, 50 milligrams. And then uh, you can say PO for, uh, for orally, or you could even write orally, or you could write by mouth. Now we get to an important part. The, uh, the frequency, is it once a day, is it twice a day? This happens to be a, a twice a day drug. So you can write BID, which is known to be twice a day, or you can just get into the safer habit of writing twice daily. Because by writing this, you're going to avoid another problem that sometimes we can see uh, with other medications. And then times how many days? Times, let's say, three months. And you'll notice in general, when there's any chance of confusion, it's always better just to write things out rather than to use fancy abbreviations. Now, let's say you had a uh, uh, a four times a day medication. This is, or a daily medication. This is where things get a bit tricky. Because, uh, let's say a tenolol, 50 milligrams PO daily. The trick with daily, the abbreviation is QD. That's very similar looking to QID. And those can get mixed up sometimes uh, if you're is not messy, or if there's an unintended mark, or let's say somebody puts a period there, maybe the period sort of had a bit of a line to it, and you can mix things up. Now, pharmacists are incredibly smart people who are an essential part of our healthcare team. They will usually pick up if there's some sort of weirdness. If, if somebody's getting four times a day a tenolol, they know that that's not right. And nevertheless, it's still just a good safety thing to reduce the chances of anything going bad by just writing, instead of this, instead of this, well, you don't want to write QID anyways, just write down daily. And then times three months. Now, to be clear, you should probably not have a patient who's getting both metoprolol and a tenolol at the same time, because that would be, that would really risk a profound beta blockade that maybe you don't want and so on, and you're just mixing two drugs from the same class. The key issue, though, is writing words out is usually preferable to fancy abbreviations. 
Now, if you have open space at the bottom, let's say you had only written the, the topolol thing, and then here's the signature line down here. A good habit to get into is you just always put a line through any open space. I even do that on the electronic versions, which come out typed for me, printed with beautiful font. I still do the squiggle through. What that does is that that gives a cue to the pharmacist that in case later on they see something squiggled in, like morphine, 10 milligrams, uh, 3, 10 milligrams, uh, PO, uh, QID times 100 tabs, they'll know something's wrong. Now, I have in my life, when I've done the squiggle, had to add things later. I worked as an emergency doctor for a long time and so on, and sometimes you have to squeeze something extra in, but then I make it really clear. I would put an extra signature around and so on. But I have had prescriptions of mine from the emergency room come back, a pharmacist will call me and say, hey, we just got this prescription for this patient with two things on it. Could you check your records? And I check the records and I say, well, there's only the metoprolol. And they say, okay, can I fax you this? And they fax me the, the prescription and it's got this squeezed in. And it's pretty obvious to everybody that this was squeezed in. So that's a handy thing to get into. Not that every single patient is trying to do bad things with prescriptions, but there are a very small part of our population is in the business of selling drugs, selling prescription drugs for profit to people who don't need them for prescription or medical reasons. So doing the squiggle is really helpful. And next, you sign your name. So you, uh, uh, I won't put my real signature there just in case somebody decides to copy it and stuff for bad reasons. So I'll just sign as if I was like a Dr. Jack Smith. So you sign your name and on, if it's got your name printed at the top, you're fine. If it doesn't, you should always print your name, Jack Smith, and put your license. So particularly if you're a resident, put in your, your, uh, your license number for your province or state or jurisdiction. And so you write that there too. And then that way, the pharmacist knows who it is and they can look you up on the computer in case you're not sure who you are and so on. Uh, and if you're in a hospital environment, when you're writing stuff, you should sign and print your name. Uh, so writing hospital orders are actually very similar. So sign and print your name, but then put your pager number there. So again, if the pharmacist has any questions, they can immediately go to the person they need to speak to. So in general, make it really clear who the patient is so that there's less chance of error. Next, you're printing things out so that it's really nice and clear. When there's any potential risk of confusion, you're putting words instead of fancy abbreviations. Fill up any white space with a squiggly line and make sure you sign and print your name and give either your license number, your page number, and there we go. And that's how you write a prescription. Thanks very much.